<laughs> Welcome, students, to another episode of Manhood Academy Podcasting. We have a small class today. We got paperclip. We got a trophy, which is symbolizing Mike. We have uh, Tim Will and the Travo. What's up, Tim Will? Hey, I'm doing pretty good right now. Uh, I'm just ready and relaxed. <laughs> And I'm aching to go, <coughs> and let's get this thing started. Yeah. 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 What's What's up, Travo? <laughs> Just relax, sit back, enjoy the funny of fellow Manhood Academy students. What, 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 what? What was that last thing you said, Travo? Enjoying the company of fellow Manhood Academy students. I like how you always end strong. Your last sentence is always your strong sentence. That's what I like about you. I like how you don't, like, s- start saying something and then just kind of trail off because you think it's done and nobody wants to hear it. You just kind of trail <laughs> off into the clouds and it goes away. I like how you do just the opposite of that. That's awesome, Travo. Travo, you there? Class. Travo, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, cool. Okay, uh, let's get this show... On the road, looks like we got drama for your mama. Let's see, the first topic is... Oh, How what? long is class going to be? What's that? How long is class going to be? You can leave whenever you want. It is uh, up to your discretion. You don't even have to tell us when you're leaving. You can just click off. Okay. Right, let's see here. Oh, oh, let's see. Forum legend. Okay, does anybody know uh, what the forum legend is? Yep. Can you explain to us the forum legend? Because it seems like a lot of people have no clue what the forum legend is. Uh... It basically tells you who's online. It tells you a little more than that. The phone legend tells you who is a student, like who is a, who is under a scholarship, who is a registered new user, who is an administrator, and then who are just guests visiting the forum. How do you figure that out? Because a lot of people are having trouble figuring this out. It's like reading a it's map. It's color coded. Oh, brilliant! <laughs> Can you tell us what that means? I don't. I don't understand it because I'm I'm representing a large contingent of the Manhood Academy uh, alumni who are very confused and like eh, they always ask. Hey, bro, are you a student or not a student? I thought you were a student, bro. I just happened right now. So, well, the only people who are currently students at the academy are the, if your name is in green, orange, or, and if you're red, you're an instructor. Yeah, pretty simple. If you see somebody in green, you're a student. That means they paid. You see somebody in orange, that means they're a freeloader. That means they're on a free ride. (laughs) That's pretty much it. That's how simple it is to figure it out. If you had looked at the bottom of the form, if you'd actually explored the form, I think you could have figured that out by now. But it looks like a couple of people are having trouble every single time I hear the same question. Are you a student, bro? How do I know? Oh, cool. <laughs> how do you know who's online, Plum? How do you know action's online? Well, asshole, if you look down in the who's online, when it says, it says right there, who's online? <laughs> it tells you exactly who's online. Maybe these people are using, are going on the phone through their phone. Maybe. But I doubt it. Even on, even on the phone, it has the same thing. Oh, really? Yes. It's really no the form, the, <laughs> I, I've been boggled. Yes. It tells you how many people are online. tells you who's online. You can click on the form. The form you're in will tell you who's browsing that forum. You can search for the members. There's multiple ways to find out things about the type of users who are online, who you're talking to, etc. There are statistics down there. You can click on those things. You can experiment. <laughs> Roll around. All right. Now let's, get, has been solved. let's get rid of that. Enough of that nonsense. Okay. Um, close, delete. Oh, I love clearing out topics. Okay, the next one. Well, that's deleting. Let's go to the next one. Open tab. It's like digging into a cereal box and getting the prize out. Oh, yeah, close this one off. Close. Delete. 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 We have so many useless topics floating around that I haven't really uh, deleted yet. I gotta get on that. All right. Oh, yeah, some drama for your mama. Okay, so... Oh, here we go. Mr. Care Bear, who refuses to post in his own thread for some reason... This asshole will post in... Uh, he'll post in the podcasting topics. He'll post in the orientation section. He'll post in the visitor section. But everywhere but his expression thread or his EM section... Or his own thread in the EM section. And he basically is posting EM posts, and he's posting expression thread. He's posting expression thread. So there's no... There's no reason you can't make an expression thread because you already made two of them. And you already made the, the drama you caused in the, uh, in the, uh, whatchamacallit, in the podcast on podcast number 88 is, an, is basically an EM post. So you already have an EM post and you have an expression post. You're all set. You have a thread. You've already broken both cherries. The only difference is, like with both, most things you hear at Manhood Academy, the difference is your perspective. If you view 
your expression thread is some special sacred thing, you will never want to fuck it up. You'll never want to post in it. You will want to have the... You're only going to post if it's perfect. If it's absolutely perfect. You will, Otherwise, you will not want to touch it. You'll not want to ruin it. But if I just tell you to post something or answer a question, I can trick you into making an expression post. You won't even realize it. Like, see how uh, Mr. Care Bear is all ecstatic and angry that DBT is uh, calling him an asshole in the podcast, and now he's threatening him, and he wants a resolution. He, want, he expects an apology. This is all part of his expectations. This is an expectation management post. But in his mind, it's totally different. It's him just handling a situation. Or him just responding to a post. So he could he could really use this as an expression post or an EM post. It will work either way. Again, the only thing preventing you, Mr. Care Bear, and a lot of other students from posting is your perspective. If you view the EM section, the, the expression section as sacred cows, as a holy you know, as holy places, you will be so worried about posting and you'll become neurotic about posting. But if you just realize these are places to practice getting your expectations met, to practice your expression, it's just like going to batting practice. You're not even at a real fucking game. You're just swinging a bat. But if you're a new student and you pick up that bat for the first time, you don't even want to swing it because you, in your mind, you're playing the Game 7 of the World Championship Series. <laughs> That's hardcore. There are no players on the field. It is Sunday. Nobody is there. And you have a bat. You should practice swinging it. That is what Manhood Academy is. It is the batting cages. It is not the actual game. You are in the batting cages. You will miss balls. You will strike out. But guess what? It doesn't matter because you're in the batting cages. If you could change your perspective and realize you are in the batting cages and not in the actual game, it will be much easier for you to post. It will be much easier for you to post. Okay, so uh, I guess uh, Mr. Kerber was listening to a podcast and he heard Kerber is an asshole. And it wasn't, it wasn't Professor Plum saying it. It was a student. And Professor Plum can call you an asshole because he has the Plum rule. He, he is always right, you're always wrong. So whatever Professor, Professor Plum refers to you as, describes you as, etc., is always right. Even if it's wrong, it's still right. Whereas a student, you have to be careful when you're talking to other students, addressing other students. Why? Paperclip. Because you're, you could be wrong. You could definitely be wrong. You don't have the luxury that Plum has of relying on being an instructor. You don't carry any instructor responsibility, so you have to be watch your P's and Q's with other students. Why else, uh, Travo? Um, I don't know. Travo, what student don't you know in the forum? Uh, most of them. Uh, do you know any names of any of the individuals in the forum, but you don't know them personally? Do you know any names that just off the bat? Anything in the chat room you can think of? Or look look right now in the chat room and see any names? Jerry you... Poppins. What if Jerry Poppins said, hey, Travo, you're an asshole, in his expression thread? Or on a podcast you didn't even attend? I wouldn't really care. You wouldn't really care? Not really. What if, uh, what if Tim Will called you an asshole? <laughs> um, no problem? It, it depends what it was for. If I was actually, you said, "Hey, you look like an asshole." <laughs> then I probably wouldn't like it. Why not? Because I don't think he has a reason for calling me an asshole. If he just states it, no justification. Number one. Okay. What else? I don't know. Tim Will. Yeah. You know anybody in the forum in the uh, chat room that you don't have a good relationship with? There is there somebody there that you see a name you don't know? Uh, there are a few. Yes. Give me one. Well, there's the aforementioned Jerry Poppins. Okay, let's say Jerry Poppins on a podcast. You're not there, and he says, "Hey, yeah, Tim, well, he's a total asshole." <laughs> and you hear that while you're listening. Who is this guy? I don't know. I don't know. Me either. You just said you're a total asshole. I probably wouldn't care. Okay. Let's say Travo it calls you an asshole. You come into class and says, hey, Tim, well, you look like an asshole. <laughs> I, would def- I would like to know why. <laughs> You'll definitely what? I want to know why you called me an asshole. <laughs> yeah, but what else did you did you not say? You definitely what? Can you repeat that question? I... You will definitely what? Care. You will definitely care. 
Okay, why do you care? He just called you an asshole. Well, me, well, me and Travel have actually talked to each other. Okay. So we have some sort of relationship. Okay. Aside from your relationship eh, that you care now that he calls you an asshole, um, why is it a problem in general? It highlights something that apparently he has an issue with. Well, he just look, said, you look like an asshole. <laughs> oh, just look, oh, I just look like an asshole? Yes. <laughs> I could probably live with that. You can live with that. So we, have, we, have, we found out today we have a lot of students with a lot of low expectations. <laughs> Paper. No, I would not be okay with that. Why wouldn't you be okay with that? What's the problem with people calling you an asshole? They're violating my expectation of being treated with respect. Being treated with respect. As a student here, you should have a basic expectation that people treat you a certain way. If you're okay with people calling you assholes and people mistreating you on the forum, other students just mistreating you, number one problem is you have very low expectations. You have a very low view of your worth in relation to the other student. Number two, calling someone an asshole is not conducive to forming a relationship. <laughs> Now, if I'm critical of students, I'm critical of their behavior, that's my business. I'm an instruct I'm the instructor. That's my job. That's why I have this academy here. I'm supposed to be critical of things that aren't conducive to your social competence. Yes, students have a certain capacity, too, to be critical uh, when they're making your uh, EM replies to your – or making replies to your EM reports, critiquing your expression posts. They, too, are – somewhat of an instruct I wouldn't say an instructor position, but they are being critical of you. So that it is understood their role is to be critical. But you have to be careful when you cross the line and uh, like DVP did and just called somebody an asshole. There's no context for it. He's not saying you're an uh, you know you're an asshole because of this, that, or even his his reason is uh, you're an asshole because you don't post. Does DVP always post? No. No, not always. Does DBP always turn in EM reports? Nope. No. So DBP himself has a lot of problems at the academy, not following directions, not not doing what he should be doing to train his social competence. So he needs to be very cr careful and handle other students carefully, um, basically to fear their authority when he is dealing with them, especially when he's being critical of them. This is like handling fire. When you fear somebody else's authority, that means you're respecting them. So if I'm fearing Travis' authority, that means I'm respecting him. There is a reason for me to care about him. So, Travo, let me ask you a question. All right. Do I fear your authority? No. You don't think so? Wait, do you fear my authority? Yes. No. Tim Will, do I fear your authority? No. <laughs> uh, Paper, do I fear your authority? Yes, you do. How do you know that? Because you don't violate my functional expectations. Like what? Like being, like not being hit in the face or, well, no, that's, no, actually, let me, th let me think of a good example. Like you actually, you work with me. You're, you're trying to help me out. You don't have to help, like, uh, you help me out. And at the same time, you're not just putting me down, putting me down. You reward me. You, you give me a positive incentive to want to continue attending this podcast. Now, if I was trying to meet your expectations, your real, like, full expectations, then by now I would have been, like, you would have kicked me out years ago. I'd just been like, hey, go do something else with your life. Well, yes, partly. Um, because I want to make you happy and I'm trying to meet your expectations, that shows I fear your authority. What's your expectation for Manhood Academy? To become socially competent. Right. Do I fear that? Do I fear your authority if I'm trying to meet your expectation? Yes, sir. Yes. So, Travo, I know you obviously don't realize it, and Tim Will, you don't realize it, but I fear your authority. The way that I address you shows that I fear your authority. Do you just say, do you hear me just calling, hey, uh, just saying like, um, Travo, you're an idiot, leave, get out, get out of the academy. Or Tim Will, uh, you just can't get it right. Uh, I don't want to deal with you anymore, you're lame, leave. Do you hear me say that to you? You know why I don't say that to you? Because you fear our authority? Yes, exactly. There are some students that uh, 
that tests my patience, right? <laughs> but yeah. I fear their authority. I want to meet their expectation of becoming of them becoming socially competent. So I address them a certain way. I handle them a certain way. I respond to them a certain way, etc. Yes, Timo. Uh, just no. I have a question because yeah. I, mean, I noticed there were a few uh, people who quote unquote flunked out of the academy. Okay. Yes. <laughs> and what's your question? And, uh, I guess one question is what does like what do you mean by flunk out? Okay. The only way you could flunk out is is uh, violating my expectation, which means you're violating not violating my expectations. You're you're challenging my authority. You're trying to undermine my authority. So, for example, um, let's say I tell you, let's see what what did let's see who flunked out. Let's let's check out and see who flunked out. Adam Smasher, perfect example, new student. Um, I told I corrected him. I told him something uh, that was wrong. Now, if he had read the new student orientation, he would know that regardless of whether my correction was right or wrong, he has to he has to honor it because I'm the instructor. That's part of being in charge. That's part of maintaining the authority uh, the authority that's over you. Just like uh, if you're a soldier and you have a general, general could tell you to go to uh, to go storm a beach somewhere, and you know it's a bad idea. But because you're under his authority, you're bound and you have to do what he says. Now you may discuss it in a you know in a respectful manner, which means you fear his authority. So you're very careful when you're discussing it with him. But you don't just outright when he's giving orders, you don't just tell him right in front of his troops and in front of the other troops or in front of the other officers. Ah, oh, you're wrong, asshole. That's a bad idea <laughs> because now you're undermining his authority. But uh, you just but well, you could say like if you could say, uh, sir, that's a bad idea because of this, this, and this. Uh, if you're a soldier, you wouldn't even address it in front of other officers. You'd probably do it in private. That's again. Respecting his authority, fearing his authority. So if a student is going to openly challenge my authority in front of other students, he's undermining my authority, um, especially if you're going to do it in the chat room. You know, I, I could just block you. I could kick you out. I could ban you, etc. So there's no way you're going to get away with it, but you you could do it. You could try and do it, and that's exactly what Adam Smasher did. And I told him, look, you know, this is the way it goes. You're wrong, and he's still challenging my authority. The, the thing that he doesn't realize is that he's trying to get something from me. I'm not trying to get something from him. I didn't. I didn't find him. He found me. So this is even a a, a more stupid move. It's just like saying, um, "Travel, you're the only mechanic in town, and my car is broken. I need help fixing my car. You're the only guy who can do it. But you're an asshole. I don't think you're doing it right. Uh, I think you're an idiot. I think you should do it this way. I mean, what liberty do I have to tell you anything? I am dependent upon you to get my need met. Right? You're the only one who yeah. can meet my need." So I'm a complete idiot if I'm telling you what to do, if I'm telling you that you're wrong, you can't do it this way. You're the only guy who has the uh, mechanical skill to fix my car. I would be a fool to do that. So this is, again, this reflects on the problems that st – why students have problems in their relationships. They don't, they don't consider what they're doing. It's like, a, it's like boggles. He likes to burn bridges while he's standing on them, right? You're an idiot. You're an asshole, right? He, he just got banned from a – from the academy for a week for fucking with another student, right? Two weeks. No, he got banned last week. One week for fucking with another student. Wait a second. What day did he get banned? Don't worry about it. Pay attention to the story. It's not, it's not relevant, okay? Just pay okay. attention. Sorry. He is. He was banned for a week from the academy just a little while ago, okay? And he got back. He had to write an apology, etc. He fucked up again. The exact same problem. Exact same thing. This shows... You know, he's an idiot. He's burning a bridge while he's standing on it. So now he has two weeks ban and he has to write another apology to that same student. So he's shooting himself in the foot. He keeps shooting himself in the foot. This is like a lot of students. They like to learn the hard way. They like to shoot themselves in the foot. Why did we get off on the side point again? <laughs> authority. Okay, so um, he's, cha he's challenging my authority. I need my authority to meet his needs. If I don't have authority over the academy, I can't meet his needs. You have to listen to me in order for me to meet your needs. It's just like if we're driving in a car and your need is to get to San Francisco, but you don't listen to me. I can't make you drive there. I can tell you, hey, you got to go left when you should be going right. Or, um, I'm sorry. I can't tell you you should be going left when you're turning right because you're not listening to me. So you can't. You, you don't, because you don't fear my authority, I can't get you to San Francisco. 
So in order for me to meet your need, I need to have authority over you. Just like your parents. If your parents are obligated to take care of you, they have to protect you, right? If they have authority over you, they should be able to spank you if you cross the street without permission or run in the street and play in the street without permission. Because you could get killed. If your parents don't have authority out of you, authority over you, you put yourself in a very dangerous situation. So authority is required to meet needs. This is why it's crucial to maintain that authority. If you don't have authority, you can't meet people's needs. In a relationship with a girl, if you don't have authority over the relationship, you can't meet her needs. In fact, not only will you not meet her needs, she will not be attracted to you as a bonus of you not being able to meet her needs. So not only will you not be able to protect her, care for her, direct her, the other side effect is that she will not be attracted to you. Same for guys. If you are not a person who cares about your expectations, you will have very little authority in your relationships to get your needs met. People won't care about your expectations. They'll overlook them. They'll slight you. They'll mistreat you. You'll tell them to show up on, uh, in an hour and you know you have limited time and they'll be like, okay, I'll be there an hour, but they don't care about your expectation. They show up in three hours and they waste your time and you're late to work or some other bad consequence happens because they don't care about your expectations. They don't fear your authority. Cool. So <laughs> authority is crucial to maintaining your relationships, to maintaining functional relationships. You need to have authority. You need to maintain your authority. Sounds good. So, All right. brings us back to our original situation. We have, uh, we have DBP calling uh, Mr. Care Bear an asshole on podcast, right? Well, Mr. Care Bear's not there. What is the problem with a student calling another student an asshole, Tim Will? In relation to what we just what I just spoke about, they have no credence to calling another student an asshole because we're all in the same boat. Right. What does it show if he's calling the student an asshole? Just flippantly calling him an asshole. He doesn't know. He, it shows that he doesn't. I don't know. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Uh, Travo, what's that show? If he flippantly refers to. Uh, Mr. Care Bear, DVP flippantly refers to Mr. Care Bear as an asshole. What does it, what does it show us in relation to what I just talked about? It shows that. Like, what does it tell us how DVP views um, Mr. Care Bear? He views him as like just another person that he doesn't have to talk to or help out. He doesn't want to build a relationship with him. Okay, so what does that tell you then about his view about uh, Mr. Care Bear? Uh, who's static is that? Uh, uh, oh, he does. DBP doesn't fear Care Bear's, Care, any of Care Bear's authority or his needs or nothing like that. Yes. He doesn't fear Mr. Care Bear's authority. He is disregarding his expectations. What is Mr. Care Bear's expectation, which is now obvious after posting his EM report? Don't call him an asshole. Right. Well, that's a, that's, that's, Treat him with respect. Yes, treat him with respect. His expectation is to be treated with respect, which essentially, what's a, what's respect mean? What does it mean if you, what does it mean if, do I respect you, Travo? Yes. What's that mean if I respect you? It means you're not going to call me an asshole. No, or... what does that mean if I respect you? What does that mean? Do you respect fire? It means you fear it. Okay, so that means I fear you if I respect you. So if, if uh, Mr. Care Bear says, hey, you need to show respect to me, what does that mean? What is he essentially telling DBP? That DBP needs to fear his authority. Yes. Why should he fear his authority? What does it show him? If, you, if I'm fearing your authority, Travis, what does that show you? That you're here to help me. That I care about your what? Needs. Tim Will, if I fear your authority, what does that tell you? Uh, it means respect. It means respect me. Right. What does it tell you about your... What word am I looking for? I care about something. If I fear your authority, I care about something. It's so much What's that? My needs. Yes. It's close. I can't go into Paper. I'm so lost right now. Well, I'm pay attention. Of what this is. 
Well, you're gonna you're gonna have to struggle through it. If you if I fear if uh if I fear your authority, that tells you what? That you respect me. Right? So that in turn means that I'm going to try to do what? Meet my expectations. Yes. I thought you said you didn't get it. I just don't get like you were saying I wrote down that you're saying that a student does not have the right to call another student an asshole because he does not fear their authority. But then how could one student fear another student's authority if there has been no and has been no French, like, the French hasn't been built yet. There hasn't been any positive incentive. Well, let me, let me tell you this. Let me ask you this. Do you have any relationships with, do you have any, uh, police officers you know very well? No. Do you, do you fear police officers? Yep. Why? Because if I disrespect them, then I will fear the consequences of getting arrested. Okay. Or, fired or whatever else. So, do you need to know somebody in order to fear them? No. Okay, so then, if, a, if another student does not fear another student's authority, then they're going to have to deal with you. So that's the last resort. Or that's the... I am the head authority. Put it that way. Okay. So everybody else is like a deputy authority, you might say. Like if there's okay. disputes, I have final say over the dispute. Because I'm the head authority. Yeah. Just like if you have a sheriff, you have deputies that are under the sheriff. They're operating under the sheriff. So, so the highest saying... authority has the arbitrating power to decide whatever. They have the final say. So then you're expecting students to fear each other's authority because if not, then you're the consequence to have to deal with you. Yeah, when they're, it's really that they're not just the, it's, it's there, it's, it's kind of a, it's kind of involved. I don't want to get into the, 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 the bigger point of, um, uh, like my authority and deputy authority regarding the students, but just between students, why should there be a fear, a mutual fear of, of each other's authority? So we can build a friendship. Tim Will, why should there be a, a mutual fear of each other's authority? I don't know. Big L, why should there be a mutual fear of each other's authority? So we can build a relationship. Yes. Tim, uh, Travo, why should there be a mutual fear and of each other's authority? I don't know. Why should you fear Tim Will's authority? Why should Tim Will, Will fear your authority? Because we already t we already we already said the answer. You're just not putting it together. It's the same answer. Why do you fear? So why then, why do you need to fear Tim Will's authority? So that they can uh, what can meet each other's needs. There you go. Oh, Mike, Mike's a smart guy. Tim, why does Travo need to fear your authority? So I can meet his needs. Yes, Travo. Why do you need to fear? Why does Tim Will need to fear your authority? So I can meet his needs. Can't hear you, Travis. Speak up. So I can meet his needs. Yes. Why do you need to fear Tim Will's authority, and why does Tim Will need to fear your authority? So we can meet each other's needs. What is that? What is that called when you guys are mutually meeting each other's needs? A relationship. So Friendship. if somebody does not fear, so if DVP does not fear um, Mr. Care Bear's authority, what happens? The relationship fails. There will be no relationship, or it will be a dysfunctional one. Yeah. Dysfunctional relationship or relationship failure. Somebody can't meet the other person's needs. Is that clear to everybody? Yep. Any yep. questions? Yep. Nope. Nope. Okay, so we have a situation here. <laughs> I don't know if we even need to cover the particulars. Let me see. Wait, let's skim real quick here. Everybody see the screen? Did you edit the post? Nope. Okay, which backbiting motherfucker shot at Mr. Care Bear's asshole? Blah blah blah. Step forward. <laughs> okay, so it sounds like a dramatic duel is taking place. It's calling like him out. Get shot. You're an asshole. Blah blah. blah. I like his images. A showdown. A showdown, <laughs> etc. Then DVP's response. Uh, if you put this in the expression thread, I might have apologized to you. But since you apparently have time to make a long line fest about something I said on a podcast. Then you definitely have the time to make an expression post. You just choose not to. Why the fuck would I respect someone who routinely criticizes other bros at the academy with a high and mighty attitude, but rarely if ever participates himself? Your knife fights with Plum don't count. In fact, because of this failed post, I'm going to be even more hostile towards you till you get the fuck on it. How do you feel about, uh, or what do you think about, uh, DVP's response, paper? I disagree with it because he's he's punishing him by scolding him, but he's not helping him out and getting him to post more by saying, hey man. Like, or he's just not rewarding him for, he's not rewarding. Um, How do you feel about his, uh, 
his response to um, Care Bear saying, okay, which backbiting motherfucker shouted Care Bear is an asshole at blah, 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 step forward. That's, that's, uh, that's Mr. Care Bear's initial concern. That's where he says his expectation is violated. Somebody oh. shouted Care Bear is an asshole. Step forward, motherfucker. They both screwed up. Well, obviously, yes. What's okay? Can you explain it to us. Well, okay. The death by porn screwed up by calling by calling uh, Mr. Care Bear an asshole, and then Mr. Care Bear screwed up by punishing, or not by punishing death by porn, but by ma- making it making it such a big. Or, no, it's, there's even a more underlying problem to this. It's not that he's making it a big deal, but he should just tell him like he's just going over the top. He should have just said, "Hey, I don't like that. Don't call me an asshole." I have a question. Go ahead. Is it, like, worse that he's calling him an asshole since he wasn't there? Like, he's doing it behind his back? Since if he was trying to punish him, then he wouldn't have been there to receive the punish. So it's like, what's the point? He's just trying to complain to everyone else that he's an asshole. Okay. He could have, he could have said, instead of said, uh, like, Mr. Care Bear should stop, or he needs to start uh, doing his expression post or whatever he was calling him an asshole right. for. It's not his place to be Professor Plum. Yeah. He needs yeah. to be very careful. Again, when he's when he's addressing other students, uh, he needs to be fearful of their authority. What does it mean to be respectful of another student? What does it mean to be respectful around fire for you, Travo? Means I fear it. So if there's an oven and there's a pot pie all the way in the back of the oven and you have to stick your whole arm in the oven to get that pot pie in the back, how are you going to do that? I just put one of those big, huge oven mitts on and make sure I don't touch any of the metal parts. Why not? Very, why don't you just jam careful. your hand? Why don't you just close your eyes and just stick your hand in the back and just feel for it? Because I don't want to get burnt. You don't want to get burned. Okay, so you fear the fire. You res- you show respect to the oven, right? You yeah, respect the fire, I fear, right? I fear getting a painful... Painful burnt. consequence, right. Okay, so apply that here. How is DBP handling... Uh... Tim Will, how is DBP handling Mr. Care Bear? He's, he's not handling it very well at all. He's just... Handling him like fire? <laughs> more like playing with fire. <laughs> yeah, more like playing with fire, right? Now we found out the fire actually is going to do something about it. It's not just an inert fire. There's pain attached to it. DDP had said this flippantly while he was right by Mr. Care Bear. They might be in a fist fight right now, right? The fire might have lashed out and burned him. Even the fire is, uh, I think I read down there, the fire is threatening <laughs> to punch him. <laughs> Multiple times. Oh, oh snaps. The fight? The fire is threatening. <laughs> yes, Mr. Care Bear is uh, the metaphor for the fire. <laughs> the fire says, I'm not surprised it was your cheap ass who acted in such a disrespectful way. Your cheap action makes me want to punch your face. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, blah, blah, blah. blah. Just talking on your ass. Da, da, da. I like how he Shut the fuck up. Shove your, your excuses. I apologize to make a man. <laughs> Otherwise, you're a cheap person with no dignity. I would so love to punch you. Such a cheap and graceless person in the face. Etc. Dang, this guy. He's ready to throw punches. So, I'd like to hear Mr. Care Bear read this post. Yeah, <laughs> I, would, I would too. It's full of, uh, yeah. full of excitement. <laughs> Doesn't sound like him when he's speaking in the classroom, but definitely uh, sounds like him. We have an expression. Practice, which I haven't read that expression post. So, yeah. what do you think about DBP's response, Tim? Will? <laughs> which one? <laughs> uh, the one where we just read, where he responded to and uh, said, he said to Mr. Care Bear, um, if you had put in the expression yeah. that I might apologize to you, etc. Throwing, ga- throwing gas into the fire. Oh. <laughs> okay. What do you think about it? Uh, if he. If he's trying to get Mr. Care Bear to make an expression post or an AM report, he's not. He's going at it the wrong way. How so? He, I think he's trying to shame him into doing it. Right. He's scolding him by calling him an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so what should he be doing, or what what would you do in this situation? Who are you asking? Uh, Big L. Okay, I would just ra- I would just rather tell him politely to just. Just um, to just like um, uh, like you're do- like you're just kind of doing this whole thing wrong. Like I don't like don't flippantly just call him an asshole and just say like what the fuck. You the point is he should have just told him like yo just just create an expression post about it. Right. Okay. Um. Another example. Uh. Let me think. Wait, but how how can DDP even tell him what to do when he hasn't even he hasn't even built a relationship with Mr. Cameron? Well, he's not. So he's presumptuous. 
Um, let me let me give you another example of handling students carefully from my point of view. Even this is involving two students, but I have to make the arbitration call, and I had to delete one student's post because it wasn't conducive to. Uh, I didn't think it was gonna it was gonna help the other students, so I deleted one of the students' posts who was trying to give him advice. Mr. Franchise uh, left something on the no fat thread. I think Tim Will uh, was back on day one again, and uh, I think Franchise says, "Don't fuck up this time. Don't fuck up this time." Why did I delete that? Sounds like good advice, right? Hey, I'm pulling for you. You're saying, hey, I'm rooting for you, Tim. Well, you can do this. Don't fuck up this time. Why did I delete it, though? It's not his place to tell him that. What happens if he tells you don't fuck up? You're going to fuck up. You might or you might not. But what's the problem with telling you not to fuck up? It's, it's not solving the issue. It's not solving the issue. That's true. But what, what's, what happens if I tell you, hey, paperclip, get in that game. Swing that bat. Get us a home run. Don't fuck up. You're putting pressure. Yeah, you're putting pressure on somebody. Yes. But why can even why why even bother about these things when first and foremost franchise should be building a relationship with these people before he tells them what to do? That's that's very good too. A lot of students don't realize that they you know they just want to give the they want to they want to give advice they want to have good, they have good intentions they want to be helpful etc. Number one, they don't have a relationship with the other students, and number two. They don't even understand their own failure. They don't realize how frail they are. They don't realize how many mistakes they make. So they're they're like boggler. They're very quick to judge the other students and tell them, "Hey, you're gonna you're fucking up. You're doing it wrong." And they don't realize how big a fuck up they are. So they're being hypocrites. Yeah. So they're they're kind of undermining what they're trying to do. If they're trying to set up this atmosphere of "Don't fuck up," it, you know what? I of all people don't want you guys to fuck up, but I know you're gonna fuck up. That's why I tell you it's okay to fuck up. I still expect you to do something or make a post or make a reply, etc. But I know you're going to fuck up. So I expect it. I give you room to make that mistake. But if I were to tell you, hey, Travo, next class, you better express yourself better than last class or don't bother coming to class. Don't fuck up. How likely are you to come to class? Not very likely. Yeah, you don't have training. You don't have training to meet my expectation. This is what a lot of students don't realize. They have expectations that are dysfunctional. They're like saying to a little baby, hey, little baby, I expect you to run and win uh, the 500-meter dash or the 100-yard dash, right? Come on, little baby, run. The baby doesn't have the capacity to meet their expectations, so they're dysfunctional expectations. A lot of students are just like, I want to give a pep talk. Come on, you can do it, Tim Will. You know, don't fuck up, don't fail me now, right? So an expectation can be dysfunctional, even if it is functional, but it's too hard for someone to meet at the moment? Yeah, it's it's maybe it's a good expectation for um, Tim Will to not smoke. But if I tell Tim Will, Tim Will, don't smoke anymore from this point on. Well, if he doesn't have the capacity to meet my expectation, my expectation is dysfunctional. He has to have a reason to not smoke. He's smoking for a reason. If I don't provide a better reason, of course he's going to smoke. Same pre- reason why people do drugs. If I don't provide a better reason... They should be doing drugs. Or provide a substitute for smoking. That's exactly <laughs> what I just said. Provide a better reason. He has to have something else. If his life is satisfying, he wouldn't be smoking in the first place. So to just tell him not to smoke, what's the problem with just telling him what not to do? There's no direction. There's no direction. I'm not providing him with any direction. I'm not telling him... Hang out with me, or here I'll help you do this, or here I'm going to do this, I'm going to work with you on this. I'm just telling him what not to do. There are a billion things to tell him what not to do. This is not going to help him. I have to direct his behavior. I have to tell him what not to do, and I have to tell him what to do. I have to make my his or my expectation for him fit his ability. Is it realistic for me to tell Boggles, "Hey Boggles, you have one week to repair all your relationships at the academy and to make all and meet all the students"? And form good relationships with them. You better do it. You have a week to do it. Nope. 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 Why not? That's isn't that a functional relationship travel for him to have good relationships at the academy? Yeah, but because he's not really in the position Travo. to just build off. Travo. Of yeah, but it's not realistic. Yes. Why isn't it realistic? Because he just, just doesn't have the training for it. Yeah, he, he doesn't have the training. He doesn't. Ha- he hasn't developed the ability. To meet my expectation. So when you're giving other people expectations, 
They may be great expectations, but does the other person have the capacity to meet them? If they do not, it is a dysfunctional expectation, even if it's a good expectation. Okay. Cool. All right. Ready, clear? Yeah. All right. Do we need to cover this anymore? Yes, sir. What would you suggest to uh, Mr. Care Bear and DBP? Anybody want to make any suggestions? Okay. DBP can just flippantly call him an asshole and just tell him, "Yo, yeah, my yo Care Bear stare. Fucking create this, uh, create this expression post, or you, or I'm not gonna, or I'm not gonna build a relationship with you at all." Okay. Instead, instead, he should, he should try to build a relationship with him by. Uh, by by at least like tell, by at least giving him some sense of direction, like create an expression post rather than just simply like calling him an asshole for doing this. After all, he's not Professor Plum. He should maybe work with him on the expression post. Say, hey, I'll spend time with you. I'll work with you on the expression post, or I'll help you do it. Or what's the problem creating? What do you want? What do you need to do it? You need want to? Do you want to work on it together, etc. He needs to take exactly. it upon himself to lead the interaction versus just telling him, hey, you better do it or else. Anything you would su- suggest to either party, uh, Tim Will? What would you tell him? If he told me, do it or else? No, just in general. What What would you say to them about the situation? Well. Your deathbed advice to DVP and Mr. Care Bear. <laughs> well, first off, DVP needs to apologize to Care Bear for calling him an asshole. And Care Bear needs, well, they need to apologize to each other, number one. Number two, they, number two, if DVP wants Care Bear to make an expression post, he should actually, like, encourage him to do it. Okay, Travel, what do you have to say to DVP and Mr. Care Bear? Yeah, I agree with Tim in that, like, they should apologize to each other for calling each other names, and then they should help each other um, do the expression posts and build a relationship, actually, instead of just fighting. So make love, not war? Yeah. Okay. Paper, what would you tell him? DVP. Wait, tell who? DVP or Care Bear? Both of them. I don't know. Who you tell DVP and Care Bear should both apologize to each other for what they did. And DVP should help Mr. Care Bear, Mr. Care Bear work on his, on Care Bear's expression for those. Okay. Uh, Big L, did you already tell him? Something? Yeah, he was the first yeah. one. Okay, first one. All right. Let's move on. Let's not dwell on this one. All right. I think we covered that adequately enough. Close. All right, what's the next one here? Open. Okay, laying down the Jackson Law. Oh, Michael Jackson, yeah. Michael Jackson Law. My first support, I have no idea what we're going to do. Okay, let's see. Before we cover this, I think there's one. I wanted to cover the labs real quick. Uh, where's the lab post? This might be it. Let me see if this is the lab post. Lab post? Uh, Travis applies the principles. Whoa, what's this? Is this Travel ZM thread? Yes, it is Travel ZM yep. thread. That's my dating website. Create a longer first okay. message. Okay, we'll cover that one. We'll cover dating dating. Oh, yeah. Sweet. And then we will cover... Let's see, where's the labs post? Come on. Franchise EM reports from hell. <laughs> God, that's going to be a long one. All right, let's cover this. Uh, all right, I'm going to leave it up to you. What do you guys want to cover? Do you want to cover Jackson first, or do you want to get to Travo's, uh, Travo's post? Travo. Travel? I'm indifferent. He's indifferent. He's indecisive. Let's cover mine since I'm here. Okay. All right. All right. I guess we're going to cover travel. Here we go. Travel. Travel. Been a dating, been a dating site. You've been a dating site? Oh, between a date. Sorry. Between a date. Why don't you read this, Travel? It's your post. <laughs> okay. Between a dating site and talking to a girl I met on Omegle, I've been having limited success. What's that mean? My pro- yeah, what is Omegle? Well, no, what's limited success? That is uh, vague. Uh, not a lot of success. Supermodels? Very- what is success? <laughs> Travel, what is you're success? so vague. Did you get not get punched in the face? Did you, <laughs> did you end up in the Playboy Mansion? Did you... <laughs> I haven't been getting what I wanted, basically. Or what I need. So what does limited What's success that? mean? Um, you might as well just say you've been having a good time. Or having a time. Have you taken any girls out? Have you gotten your numbers? Um, not really. Well, why don't you put all that instead of this bullshit term, limited success? What the fuck does that even mean, Travo? I don't know. I need to explain it more. Exactly. Nobody knows what the hell you're talking about. 
We don't know if this works or not. You put the word success, so I'm assuming this worked. But the way you explain it, it sounds like it is not working. Okay. Be clear. Yeah. Don't be Anybody. vague. Ask Tim Will if you need help learning how to be clear and not vague. Keep going. Okay. My process with the dating site goes like this. I look at my matches that live within 25 miles from me and try to pick out the hotties from the fatties. <laughs> yes. Get those fatties out of there. Okay, keep going. If their profile picture catches my eye, I first look at all their pictures to make sure it's not just a fat girl with a key shot. Yeah, not a MySpace then, angle. And then I read their profile. As I'm reading, I try to pick out things that spark my interest and then convey that through the message I send them. Here are some examples. Would you like me to read the examples, too? Do it. All right. I like how you can be candid. <laughs> I like how you can be candid and you see a little metaphor to describe yourself as a straight puzzle piece because you don't fit in anywhere. Let's see. Low maintenance? Check. Honest? Check. Likes being outdoors? Check. Aw, and you're shy around guys, too. I have such a sweet tooth for your shy girls. They just make my heart melt. Yeah. Don't worry about it, though. Most guys, including me, are pretty shy around girls, too. Like, seriously, I used to think that telling girls I like I like them was like trying to talk to God himself and convince him why I should get into heaven. And I'm not religious, by the way, but God can be used for some really pimp metaphors. Yeah. Winky face. All right. <laughs> what do you think, uh, Tim Will, of this message? <laughs> What? I'm speechless. Speechless? What Is that mean? Is that good or bad? A good speechless or a bad speechless? I mean, I, like, I, I mean, I actually like the fact that you're able to, you know, really, you know, express yourself to a girl like that. Okay. I mean, you're pretty, tra- I mean, it's pretty transparent in a lot of ways. Good things, bad things. So far, so good. So far, so good? No bad? Like, I, I would say, like, when he says, like, you know, oh, you try around guys to have some sweet tools. That part I liked. I mean, he's talking about himself. Right. Uh, although, low maintenance, honest, likes being outdoors. I don't know if that's him qualifying her or is that... Uh, him qualifying her? Or I don't know if, if it's him. I don't, know, I don't know if that is him talking, trying to describe her personality or himself. Okay. Uh, paper. Okay, my favorite part about this was the second to last sentence when he talks about how, like, I used to think that telling girls I like, I liked them was like trying to talk to God himself and convince him why she's going to heaven. And then he says, you know, in parentheses, I'm not religious, by the way, blah, blah, blah. I like that because he was talking about himself. So I'm like, all right, so this, you know, I got a little sneak peek of how travel is. The beginning, the beginning of the paragraph, I mean, yeah, it was interesting to read. I had fun reading it because it was just, tell me what he likes, but then he didn't, really, he didn't express, he didn't tell me who he was. Like, he didn't tell me, like, why he likes girls for low maintenance, or why he likes honest girls. So I didn't really, I didn't get to see, you know, I didn't get to learn about Travel until the end of okay. this paragraph. Okay, there you go. Alright, I'm going to have to agree with Travel and say that it's just, uh, like, it does scratch the surface in the sense that he's expressing himself about how he, uh, how he reacts to her. However, he just doesn't, like, express that, like, how he, um, about, like, uh, how it feel, how he feels for him, uh, like, how he feels himself about it. Okay. So, there's not a lot of him in there. No. What are some good things he has in here? Tim Will? Like, anything good in here? Uh, there's a couple, there's a couple of things, uh. What are some things that a girl's gonna respond to? There's, let me see... What's a uh, girl attracted to? Hmm. 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 says he's pretty shy around girls, too. He's shy around girls. That's the attractive part? I was like, oh. 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 That's so sweet. Anybody else know what girls are attracted to at all? Anybody? Anybody? Yeah. Read section two? Anything? Yeah. What? The, the second to last sentence where he talks about how, like, I used to think that telling girls and the rest. I like that. That was my favorite part. So you're a girl, you like that. Okay. Who yeah, else is a girl who likes too. that? Anybody else like anything or, or think there's anything here that a girl would like? Oh, I lo- Yeah, I'm with Torero on the, uh, on the, uh, heaven, uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, hold on, hold on, hold on. I, hold on. I'm, damn it. How <laughs> did I get that shit wrong? Sorry, okay. Peter Cliff. No truth. I know it's funny. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I guess I look like a little bit. The other, the, in, but the other part that I liked was, 
uh, wait, well, where was it? I have a sweet tooth uh, for shy girls. It just kind of shows, like, what he likes about her. Okay, so we show that it shows, okay, it shows what he likes about her, but how is this, how is this relevant to us getting a girl? What does that, what does that tell us? I mean, what does that do for us? What does this tell you? What does this do? It tell it, um, it tells us, like, about his, um, wait, it tells us about his preferences. Okay. Tells us about his, like, what about, well, like, you know what I like? Okay, let's, let's, I'm just going to point out things that I like, and you can tell me why I like them, or why I thought these were important to include. Okay. All right. He says, uh, first part's cool. It says, let's see, low maintenance, check. Honest, check. Life's being outdoors, check. Anybody? You like that. Yeah, why do I like that? Because it tells you what he likes, and that's personal preference. That's, that's his... That's Anybody his... know why I like that? Hmm. 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 What do girls is like? It, is it because I'm telling her how, like, what about her I like? What do like, girls? What, what do girls respond to? What do girls like about guys? Anybody read section two of the ebook? When they can lead them. What's that? When they lead them. Who's saying that? Trevor. Are you asking me or are you telling me? <laughs> when they lead it? What? <laughs> Girls like it when guys lose them. Ah, uh, what's that say when you go, low maintenance, check, honest, check, being outdoors, check? What's all that for? Meeting his expectations. What's that? Meeting his expectations. Can you put that in a complete sentence so it's intelligible to other people? Uh, it says that travel has expectations, which means that he can lead. Okay. So it means that he has some direction, some expectation. He knows where he's going. You should be low maintenance. This would even be better if he said you need to be low maintenance or you should be. Or I don't date chicks who aren't, or, I don't date dramatic chicks so you have to be X, Y, and Z. Showing expectations. Now, while he says here, okay, why didn't I like this? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read a part that I didn't like. Okay, I have such a sweet tooth for shy girls. I like that. They just make my heart melt. Don't worry about it, though. Most guys, including me, are pretty shy around girls, too. Like, seriously, I used to think that telling girls I like I like them was like trying to talk to God himself and convince him why I should get into heaven. It's putting her on a pedestal. Can anybody expand on that? It is putting her on a pedestal because he's implying that... Like, that he's implying... Oh. Go ahead. Oh. He's implying that the, like, she's way beyond uh, his level in that sense. Like, you're not even worth, uh, like, you, like, you're not even worth, um, uh, like, I'm not even worth your time kind of, uh, kind of, ped- I'm putting on a pedestal. Yes. Travel saying, you're much more important than I am. I need to meet your expectations. I'm a shy guy. What does travel, what does travel need to be to be attractive? Why are shy guys unattractive? Put it that way. Because because they have no authority. Because they, they have no express. authority. I gotta, uh, I gotta turn off your microphone. I gotta uh, use the mic. Mike. Too much static. Thank there you. you. Um, yes. Why are people shy? Travel, why are you shy? Because I'm worried too much about what other people think. Okay. I'm worried too much about other people's expectations and not... Making people meet my expectations. Are you asking me? Or are you telling me? I'm telling you. Are you you sure you're telling me? (laughs) Travel, you there? Yeah. Wake up. Travel, you there? Yeah. Why are you shy? Because I'm more worried about other... No, wait, I'm more worried about meeting other people's expectations than other people meeting my own. Why is that not attractive to a girl? Because girls are attracted to guys who force them to meet their expectations. Why? Why, Tim Will? Uh, 
Uh, are attra- I know they're they're attracted to uh, order. Uh huh. Okay, everybody's attracted to order. So on the girl side. Paperclip. <laughs> they, uh, they when when you give a girl expectations, you're giving them boundaries, which means that you will be taking care of them. Okay, so a girl, if your girl is attracted to order, what is the female role if she is orderly? Submiss- she should be submissive. Submissive. What is the male's role if he's orderly? Yes, Dominant. Dominant, authoritative, etc. So who should be leading? The guy. The man. Me. Yes, you should be leading. So what is attractive to a woman then? Saying, hey, honey, whatever you want is fine? No. Why not? Because you're not giving her boundaries. You're letting her walk all over you. You're letting her do what? What is she becoming? Uh, authoritative. She is becoming what in the relationship? The man. Yeah, you are the now the bitch. You are the chick. She is in charge. So while this might be a great expression post to talk about your thoughts and your feelings, when it comes to, you know, the real world... It's not conducive to a relationship. It's conducive if you already have authority. Do you have authority established? No. Charlie, so I shouldn't tell girls that I'm shy. What's that? So I shouldn't tell girls that I'm shy if I don't have authority. When should you tell Sorry. girls you're shy? Uh, I don't know. After you got her invested in you. Why? Why not before? Because you haven't established your authority, so she's not going to respect your authority. <laughs> you haven't established your authority, so she's not going to respect your authority. <laughs> Scratch that. Before she's attracted, she what, what attracts her in the first place? Authority. Order. When you are an orderly man, you have authority over her. You are exercising authority. You are leading her. So you need to demonstrate that you can lead. One of these is the ways to do that, a simple way to do that, is to... Have expectations. State your expectations. What you expect of her. You are leading her. You are putting boundaries on her. You are limiting her. This is attractive. Sweet. When now can you say, oh, I'm a shy guy? When you have established your authority. Why? Because now she... She's... Because now she is submissive. She won't think you're a shy guy. Number one... You shouldn't be a shy guy. That's that's the first problem. Number two, if you say if I go up to a girl and I say I'm an I'm a dork, I'm a retard, is she gonna believe me? Yeah, yeah. You think if I go up to a girl and say I'm I'm a dork, I'm a retard? Yeah, she might initially believe me. You're right. But what if she she uh, says, "Oh, I, my favorite music is uh, is Justin Timberlake," and I go, "Are you retarded? What are you listening to?" <laughs> Nobody listens to Justin Timberlake. You need to listen to something good. Does she still think I'm a dork? I'm a retard? Why not? Because now you have, you're enforcing your expectations. Yeah, I've set limits. I've said this isn't acceptable. I've set boundaries. I've said, I mean, I've applied, uh, I punished her. Right? I said, that's not good. This is what I expect. So I've shown that I'm a guy, that I'm in charge. When I set boundaries and limitations, that shows I'm in charge. It's my way. If I can't set boundaries and limitations, I will not be in charge, and she will not be attracted. So, really, what I tell her isn't really dependent upon the content. It's dependent upon how I say it, authoritatively or not, and how I punish or reward her, depending on if she meets my expectations. So, I can very, I could go up and say, I'm a cool guy. I could go up and say, I'm a nerd, I'm a retard, I'm a dork. But... The way I'm saying it demonstrates, or how I handle her reaction to it demonstrates that I have authority over her. If I was saying, oh, I'm, a sh- I'm such a shy guy, I'm so shy around girls, and she goes, oh, that's so lame. And I, go, I know, I'm sorry, I'm trying to fix it. What does that tell her? That she's a man. What's that? That she's a man and she has the authority over the Yeah, who gave the other answer? Tim Will. Tim Will. Uh, basically, you're, what you're saying is... You- you value her expectations more than your own. Yes, it tells her you're expecting her to lead and you're going to follow. You value her expectations more than your own. She has authority over you. Is that attractive to a girl? Nope. So the issue really isn't, strictly speaking, the fact that he said, I'm a shy guy. But 
because he can't use any voice tone or facial expression, and he can, he's only writing this to her, he needs to not say that because of what, Tim Will? Well, one, it'll probably be interpreted in the worst possible way. Yes. And it, he needs to demonstrate that he is the guy in charge. He has expectations like he just did. He did it very lightly in a very subtle way where he says, low maintenance, check. Honest, check. Likes being outdoors, check. What's that mean when he puts check there? Expectations. Those are his that, expectations. That means I approve of her. Yeah, I approve like of that. that. You're low maintenance? Okay, check. Good. You're honest? Check. Oh, good. These all meet my expectations. These are essentially what they're saying. An even more direct way to say that is, uh, I hope you're not one of those high maintenance chicks. I expect you to be this type of chick. Oh, are you I, honest? Because I'm only dating an honest girl. You need to be at least a little bit athletic. I don't want to date a lazy, fat slob. <laughs> like, she already said she was these things on her profile. That's great. You can compliment so, her. You could say those meet your expectations, just like you're doing, or okay. you could go even further. Oh, I love chicks that hike. Uh, the last chick I dated, she was, uh, she liked to stay indoors. I, I hate dating lazy chicks. The chick I want to date has to be able to do, you know, hike like she's met your expectation already. Okay. That's another way to indirectly say, hey, this is what I expect. You could do it directly or indirectly. Or you could refer to, remember, uh, you can refer to like, uh, let's say she likes, uh, country music. And you could say, oh, I love country music because, um, I like this song, etc. Uh, this other girl I talked to, she said she likes uh, death metal. I fucking hate death metal. Death metal is so retarded. Or uh, people who listen to death metal are, you know, are just uh, unstable, crazy people. I, that doesn't. I don't like that at all. It doesn't turn me on at all. What do, what do I? What does it imply when I say travel? That doesn't turn me on at all. It implies that I expect them to not be like that. Yeah, it implies that you have expectations. You expect them to be a certain way. So even though you're not directly saying, hey, country music's bad or this or that, you're still saying in an indirect way, I have expectations. What's a direct way to say you have expectations? Be like, I expect you to listen to country music and not death metal. Okay, let's go Let's go to – what dating site are we going to, Travo? Okay, Cupid. Okay, Cupid.com. All right. Let's check out some of these bitches. <laughs> Um, start meeting people. I'm male, straight, single, next. Here we go. Nice to meet some eyes online. How do we start searching? Can't we just search one? What's the site we can just start searching immediately? Plenty of fish. Plenty of fish dot com. Alright. Oh yeah. Let's check out some bitches. <laughs> God damn it. What happened? Plenty of fish dot com. Here we go. Off. Search. <laughs> Just go online. See who's online here. Dang, there's a lot of people on this Click. website. Click. What the fuck? Okay. Ah, damn it. Oh, you. bro, here. How do we get to how do we get the chicks? <laughs> search. I guess search. search. All right. I'm a male seeking a female. Eighteen to let's see. What's our? Let's say eighteen to twenty-five. Let's just look for super hotties. Four. <laughs> we'll say long-term girls of long-term um, intent. What? For intent? What? What does this mean? Wants a relationship? Oh, we're just casual dating, no commitment. Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Who cares? Let's say. Let's try state. <laughs> Let's look at some hotties in Arizona. Alright. Um, we're good to go. Oops. Gallery. Oh, no, we want to go profiles, right? Detailed. We want to go uh, only images. Sort by last visit, go fishing. All right. Let's see some of these bitches. All right. Let's go with Summer Love. Let's check out Summer Love. Click. How do we click on this bitch? Come on. Okay. We'll get one. We'll get, we'll get like, we'll get like three chicks. Let's see. Chloe Cupcake. And let's go to, to, oh, look at this bitch. There's no bullshit. <laughs> Just no bullshit. <laughs> okay, Eighteen. Uh, <laughs> All right. Let's also let's actually put in in our dating. You know, wants a date but nothing serious. Oh, I put the wrong thing in. We want to put wants a date but nothing serious. Let's search that one first. We want to get rid of these. Actually, we we'll keep two of those. We'll keep two of those in there. Zip code. Um, looking for Mister Right, not right now. Let's get this hoe. Let's get. 
Got this hoe. Let's see who else. Let's get one more hoe. We'll get this hoe right here. All right, and we need uh, nothing serious. Wants a relationship. There we go. Search. Okay. Yeah, the quality just went down. All right. Oh my goodness. We'll pull this one. No fatty. No fatty. Jeez. No fatty. No fatty. No fatty. Well. How many down. badasses are... Why don't you start looking for the relationship? Well, the thing is, every chick wants a relationship, but the fatties and fuglies are generally on a site, you know, on a dating site, are going to be the ones that are looking more for the relationship because they can't afford to be as choosy uh, as the hotter chicks. But not a, not, a, not a hard and fast rule, but generally speaking. You could just see from the pictures here of the difference between the casual encounter chicks versus the chicks that are just casually dating versus chicks that are... These are chicks that are looking for a relationship. I don't, see, trust, I don't trust these images when I want to see your face. Oh, yeah, you can see most of these are tubbies. Okay, so <laughs> we got a selection here. All right. Okay. My birthday is on the 15th. I want a tattoo but can't afford it. Lol. Happy Valentine's Day. Read this Read this before you message me. Expectations. What's that tell? Expectation, right? What's that tell you? Why is she, she telling you to read this? A bitch. What yeah, does that tell you about uh, who's messaging her? Kind of alert. Retards, listen. What, what does it tell you about who's messaging her? Oh, they are, they're already, uh, they're already thinking about her expectations. Well, she has a lot of guys messaging her. Oh. So a lot of guys are probably typing the same thing. Hey, what's, we'll find out, watch. I don't get it when someone's like, here's a picture of me when I was younger. Is there a camera that could take pictures of me when I'm older? I want one. I'm Chloe, I'm bisexual, I'm Catholic, but I don't go to church. Let's kick a bomb out of the, oh, I am funny, I'm smart. Too smart to take this shit. I cook it, blah, blah, blah. Okay, loves, la, la, hates. One night stands, just the beavers. Okay, so she's got a whole list here. So she's probably got... Uh, some girls will read... Well, like, especially hot chicks will have, like, read this before you message me. And they'll say things specifically like, No, hey, what's up, babies? Why do they put that? Because it's, everybody says that? Because everyone... Because any guy can say that. No, it's because it's punching them. It's not giving no. them any positive sense of No, no. What is, why are they saying, no, what's up, baby? Quote in quotes, or hey, what's up? Because they're expecting the chick to talk and be the one doing all the work. No. Every, no, everybody, every guy is messaging her with, hey, what's up? Every guy thinks that they're the only guy on the site. That's how retarded these guys are on here. They message a chick, hey, what's up? Thinking that they're the only person sending this super hot chick a message. She's probably getting a billion messages. A billion hey what's ups. How is your what's up different from this guy's what's up? It's not. It's not. So she's a care. She's clicking next. So she develops hot chicks or girls on here will eventually develop these expectations. Some will. Some won't. Some are a little more submissive in nature or some have been brought up a little bit more submissively, but you can tend to see. Uh, this girl just has general expectations. She doesn't have one of these. Usually when I see these, I'm ready for like a long list of like, don't say what's up. Make sure you're this. Make sure you have good grammar. A lot of girls will recommend and say, don't type like this, where you type you, the letter U instead of Y-O-U. You're so lazy when you do this. That's my pet peeve. You know, they have a lot of bullshit expectations like that. Okay, so she loves pinup girls, old-fashioned things, all, you know, all this crap, meaningless. She hates one-night stands. Justin Bieber, she hates one-night stands. <laughs> this means she wants a relationship, like every girl. People who judge. Why do girls always have comments about, don't be judgmental, don't judge me. People who judge. Why? Because they're the ones judging everyone else. Yes, so why do they say they don't want people who judge? Because they don't want to be with someone just like them. They're very insecure, and they don't want somebody judging like they judge other people. This lets you know that girls are very judgmental. Girls are the first to put this on here. And they're fucking hypocritical. That's... Heights... This is this is the uh, hey, this is the unstated. Called it out. We call it out with the whole like writing. Like, people, people who talk like this talk like this. Okay, so yeah, okay. <laughs> bad grammar, guys. Dude, this girl has too many expectations for how she looks. Yeah, she's no list. <laughs> girl like this, I would give her a mountain of expectations. Don't do this. Don't be a cunt. Don't do this. Don't do that. You know, I would have her a mile long. Wait, 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 stop her. right there. Yes. Over religious, against religion. She's Catholic, but she does go to church. That's my belief. Again, this is if you're you shouldn't be reading this like a guy, like a like a textbook. You should be just like looking at this and ignoring it. Any guy who reads this and, and is actually takes it seriously will be like, 
uh, well, they'll react like Big L. They go like, that girl's a hypocrite. I can't believe she did that because they have no experience with girls. They don't realize this is like reading uh, a kid's rendition of what society should be like. Like, how would you design society if you were a kid? Well, I put big Tyrannosaurus Rexes in the middle of the street. I make chocolate fountains, and I'd have a root beer waterfall everywhere, and it would always be Sunday. I mean, this society would never work. But this is because you're dealing with a kid. You have to realize them speaking is just – it's going to be nonsense, and it's you could ignore it. You just need to give them their expectations to make them happy. So you shouldn't be reading this going, oh, she's Catholic, but she doesn't know sure. How does that work with her being conservative Republican? And how does that work here with – she says she doesn't want religious people and da complete bullshit. None of this stuff matters. I don't like Justin Bieber. Oh, so I better throw away all my Justin Bieber tapes. Oh, the Twilight <laughs> series. I better get rid of my Twilight books. So, fuck everything. Uh, so, fuck all her expectations. You can tell that, I mean, look at this. She already has people who judge on here, but then she has all these things she hates. What does that yeah. tell you? She's judging right here, so... Yeah, so, right. it's it's irrelevant. All her likes and dislikes, they're all irrelevant. They're all irrelevant. You are in charge. You shouldn't be going by any of this bullshit. I think they're funny though. Because these are these are like just pretenses that start a conversation. Like you have a pigeon collection at home, you can talk about your pigeons. She has pigeons on there. <laughs> Who cares? The only point is that these are just pretenses for conversation. They have they her expectations irrelevant, meaningless. Alright. Alright, click off there. So don't take hunts like her seriously. Ooh. Don't take any girl seriously. All right. Oh, this one's better. <laughs> Man, I completed retail high school ball. Just look damn Name damn. Sebastian a mouthful I know. Haha, <laughs> but you could call me Anna. I'm 18 years old, young, but I feel entirely dual. I don't do drugs. If you do, then stray away. If you don't do drugs, not even pot. Wait, I don't do drugs. If you do, then stray away. I think she means stay away. So if you're yeah. a druggie, don't do your drugs around her. You're going to need more emotional investment before you can start introducing her to pot. I drink occasionally, <laughs> socially, Shit, not very I'm often. I'm to say that I'm a stoner just to piss her, just to piss her off. <laughs> and I inhale that nicotine. I'm also a bit of a nerd and goof. Ha <laughs> ha. I tend to catch the beauty and the unusual. Art is amazing, and I mostly love dark types. But anything creative usually stimulates. <laughs> and again, all this is bullshit. Personal preferences. Yeah. Completely start, ignore it and start with your expectations. Start with. Telling her about yourself and what you like, what you don't like, what you expect. You have to look at this as all optional. When she tells you, I like dark, mysterious people. I like dark places. Eh. What is, what she, is likes the, she likes the things she's emotionally invested in, not dark places. If you like light places and she's emotionally invested in you, suddenly she likes light places. Okay? Uh, what is so amazing to me is their expectations and how they're so bold about it. And there's, yeah, because so this, this what does this, this tell you about guys? They're vaginas. Yeah, they're or complete neurotic. fucking meninginas that she even has all these expectations. If I do not respond, don't bug me. I will block you and think of you as a major creep. Yeah, cool story, bro. Okay, so this tells you don't block, don't don't message me a billion times. All right. More uh, I can't be anymore. What? Damn you, plenty of fish. You have failed us. Enter letters. Uh, what? What is this? I don't understand. I don't understand. You know, it's probably a free trial where you can only see three to four profiles, and that's it. No, that can't be right. Why can't we just look at people online? Let's see. Who's online. Got too exclusive. Too exclusive. Okay, let's see. Sham. All right. Well, oh, I guess we can. Uh, fucking asshole. Anybody have any more? Let's let's go to Match. dot com, the most popular dating site of all. I don't think they need a register to go on that website. Uh, view photos between. Let's go. Eighteen to twenty-five. Bam. I am a. Man, looking for a woman. Man. Uh, near a zip code. Who has an expensive zip code? Who knows an expensive zip code? 10021. 10021. Oh. What is that, like? Upper East Side Manhattan. Oh, that's dope. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the guy's Looking for gold diggers? I'm looking for gold diggers. All right, I'm ready. Ah. Uh, okay, wait. Blah, uh, blah. Blah, 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 oops, <laughs> da, 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 at AOL.com, <laughs> click, podcast land, we're just uh, filling in a fake profile real quick so we can get the stupid search engine, <laughs> begin that, <laughs> alright, <laughs> okay, so let's check out, <laughs> right. okay, so let's check out a Petre, New York, 24, yes, it worked, oh no, what are the basics about her? Let's see. Is this a new profile? Come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Okay. Oh, she's hot. 
All right. About her. Let's see. Bangable? Smokes? No yeah, way. Yeah, banger. Short and sweet. I'm an NF. I'm an INFJ. Okay, so she uses the <laughs> stupid that? psychology model. It's it's a personality type. Yeah, thing. some personality type. Just oh, bullshit wow. psychology. It's harder to get to me to. She's probably like into ast- astrology. It's harder to get me to stop laughing than it is to get me to start. Good. I appreciate friendly competition and intelligent conversation. Can't stand contests, anyone? My initial shyness can be misinterpreted as disinterest. Shy girl. Sometimes I need a little patience, but I promise I always come around. When I give myself, I put in everything. I'm the epitome of I can't judge a book by its cover. I look young and get carded for our movies. Blah, blah, blah. I love to write. Blah, blah, blah. Current and making home. I'm looking for someone who's into more than just my picture and can tell me something beyond the hellos and how are yous. Again, guys, just leaving one word. Emails. Hello. How are you? A wink. I don't even know why they put the wink feature. I know why they put it, but I don't know why they still have it. See how they have this wink feature on here? Yeah. They have this on a lot of sites where it's just like if you're interested in somebody, you can wink at them. It's like oh, for the shy see. people, the forever alones. But it's yeah. completely useless because they get a billion winks a day. It's just like typing hello to somebody. It's it's useless. If you want to get somebody's oh. attention, you need to type out a full email. Oh. What I recommend for profiles is to have a have a form, uh, a form letter response where it kind of covers like general things and talks about yourself in general. And then you leave some blanks in there so you could address a couple things in her profile so she knows – or she thinks you're reading her profile. So, for instance, she has something in here that mentions, uh, I don't know. I recently took a job in Manhattan, and I'm fascinated with the city. And you can So you can mention something in your cut-and-paste response that says something about Manhattan. Like you visited there, or you love it there too, etc. So you want to have one or two things that are specifically addressing things in the profile. And then the rest of it is just your kind of pat expectations and what you like, what you, what you don't like, etc. So it's a general it's a general thing that you could cut and paste so you don't have to type out a response to every fucking girl on here because otherwise it just gets fucking tedious. Oh, internet fail. It's a blackout. The power is out. The lights are out. Looks like the podcast is forcefully over. See you next time.